You bet, Andrew. Okay, well, welcome everybody to the February meeting of the uh, advisory committee to the Eugene Airport. And uh, at this time, if somebody's got a list of the uh, guests, I'm going to turn it over to them to read that off. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go in the order they show up on my lists. I don't know how that gets ordered, but uh, looks like we've got Randy from the airport, uh, Mark, who we just heard from, Nani, can you introduce yourself, please? I apologize if I said your name wrong. Nani, are you are you with us? I see your name on my list. Oh, you're muted. I can't hear you. <laughs> I'll come back to you. How about that? I'll come back to you. Uh, let's see, Brittany Quick Warner, welcome for your first. Airport Advisory Board meeting. Welcome. If you want to introduce yourself to the group, that would be great. Hi, yes, and I'm so sorry I'm late. It's never a good impression to set. Uh, Brittany Quick Warner, President and CEO of the Eugene Chamber of Commerce. I'm super uh, honored to be here with you all. Excellent. Glad to have you here. Uh, Andy Vabora? You're muted, Andy. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Andy Vabora, Travel Lane County, and I'm going to turn this back off so I can finish my lunch. <laughs> Sounds good. Clarissa, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, it's Clarissa Warwick. I'm the general manager at Atlantic Aviation. Great. Liz? Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Liz Dolliger, Executive Vice President of Merite Hotel Management. Thank you, Mariah. Hello, Eugene Airport uh, Environmental Project Manager. And Matt Hogan. Matt Hogan, CW Walker. Nani, let's try you one more time. Pop back on my list. Looks like we lost her, Andrew. Yeah, I can still see her, but I can't hear her or anything. But yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Patricia. Hi. I, I, oh, there oh. you are. Yes. I'm with the Civil Air Patrol. So uh, Scott McGuire in our IT department got the email for this and wasn't able to attend. So I volunteered to attend for him. I'm with the uh, Eugene Civil Air Patrol Squadron. Great. Over by, yeah. Welcome. Thank Patricia. You. Hi, Patricia Haley, Assistant Airport Director for Finance and Admin. Piotrick? I'm Piotrick Bucharski, and I'm with Summit Bank. Uh, Ray Beverly. I'm Ray Beverly, uh, the General Aviation Member of the Eugene Airport Advisory. Great. Rhonda? Hi, can you hear me? Yep. <laughs> um, this is Rhonda Reed. I am the travel and accounting manager for Trix Incorporated. Great, Tina. Hi, Tina Goldberg. Um, I'm senior director of uh, economic development and industry partnerships at the University of Oregon. Great, and Travis? Hi, Eugene Airport Tenant Service Manager. Did I miss, oh, Vaden, we didn't get you. Hi, good morning, everybody. Vaden Francisco, Synergy Air here at the airport. And then Randy, who do we have online or on call? We have Bobby Green on the phone. Great. Did I miss anyone? Great. Well, welcome, everybody. Mark, back to you. Okay, yeah. This time, guys, I'm going to turn it back right back to you, Andrew, for the director's okay. report. I'm going to share my screen here. Are you all seeing that? Yeah. Yep. All right. So there's our agenda. I think we're going to go through um, the director's report, give you an update on some legislative, well, legislative affairs. And we've been doing some rounds for air service with our airline partners. Um, Patricia's going to give you the finances. We'll open it up for discussion. 
to, and then to the floor. Uh, and then if we're done, we'll move on. So here's our activity report. Total operations a little bit down um, from last year. Um, so uh, fewer actual operations, but you can see our, our air carrier landings are up quite significantly and our in-plane passengers are way up. So um, possible reasons for this is upgaging of aircraft, right? So fewer flights, but larger aircraft. So that means more seats. Um, so we're, we're busy, <laughs> we are breaking, we are at or above 2019 levels, which was a record year um, across the board. Um, total passengers, you can see we're, we're about 12% up from where we're in 2019, way up from our you know, pandemic time. And then year to date, it's just gonna be this month, right? So it's gonna be the same number because we're just in January. Our load factors, our load factors are looking really strong, especially when you consider it, you know, compare it to the rest of the, the industry. So this is, this is a critical number, as you all know, to uh, this is how full our, our planes are going out. 77, I'll take that right now. That's, that's really strong, especially with all the new capacity we added. To be able to absorb that capacity and have this level of uh, load factor just shows we're just doing really strong and there's just a lot of demand for, for EUG. And you can see the breakdown of the market share there. As usual, United is, is our, our, our top player with Southwest creeping up there, right? Every month we see Southwest grab up a little bit more market share. Um, so they're, they're doing really strong. We'll talk a little bit more about what their plans are a little bit later. Air cargo, you know, our air cargo is, is significantly down, uh, both from pre-pandemic and during pandemic. So uh, I'm not really sure what the driver is. I, I know the mushrooms were always a big thing and the, the, the mushrooms going out um, is uh, still way down just because we're not completely out. But um, I would have expected to, a little stronger numbers at this point, but just hasn't come there yet. And then I talked about those load factors. So here, here's our comparison chart. You can see um, compared to the people we, you know, compare, well, I am sorry. Yeah, I'm, my gonna stop touching the wheel on my mouse. It keeps doing that. Um, so you can see our employments there for, you know, last three years um, up 21%. And when you look at uh, the other players on the list there, other than Jackson Hole, which they, they just have done really strong because they're such a leisure market and outdoor spaces, um, we're, we're really sitting in a great place. Patricia? All right. So our revenue is 6% over budget and 135% above last year's, which is amazing. That shows that strong recovery. You can see we transferred a million dollars to our capital fund and we'll be transferring some more. Personnel is 1% under budget and 13% over last year. That's because we added some FTE and parking services this year and a new financial compliance officer. Um, materials and services is under budget by 20% and 23% above last year. Um, the terminal is over budget a bit because we've done some annual service contract extensions for the year. So we pay a year up front. So I think that's what's driving that being over budget. Uh, capital is still that John Deere tractor that we ordered last year and didn't come in until this year. For central services, they bill their one twelfth every month and it's right on target. So overall operating expense is under 8% from this year and up 16% from last year. The main driver of that is of course the FTE. We're in a positive net position of 656,000 this month without any relief or grant support and 1.7 with the additional relief support. So overall, we are doing really good. We continue that, that growth that we saw last month. Okay. The revenue. So we're looking at the yellow, the kind of yellow orange you on there. And you can see we've just blown out of water for January, the revenue, I'm sorry, December blew it out of the water. January, we kind of flattened off again, but that's to be expected. We kind of go down in January. But overall, we're, we're doing okay. 
expense is just kind of ticking along there, um, going down a bit in January compared to December, but right up there with the rest of the year. Now this is without CARES, so you can see that the yellow line is still above a million dollars. Um, we're looking good without any relief grants. And then of course, with the relief grants, we're still way above them. Um, you can see the yellow line where it stops there. Um, we'll, we'll do some more draws and, and we'll see it go back up a little bit. But overall, staying in the positive, staying above million on our uh, recovery and looking good. All right, thank you, Tricia. Welcome. So yeah, as I mentioned, we've been doing uh, our airline visits. So we just came back from Routes, which is our speed dating with airlines. Um, so we met with quite a few airlines, including uh, Breeze. We met with Hawaiian um, and a, a few others uh, to try and you know just keep us on their radar screen. Everyone really agrees that the Eugene market is really strong. Um, for some, it's just not the right move. You know, they might be more East Coast based and they're, they're not ready to do a West Coast. And others, really a consistent theme across the board was just the staffing shortages and most notably uh, pilot shortages on the regional side, really struggling to get um, enough hours, pilot hours available to even service the flights they have now, never mind um, adding new services to a new station. So we're really happy that, you know, we added our three airlines this year, Southwest, Avelo, and AHA. Um, they all seem to be doing really well. We went with all three of them at routes as well. Um, and they all had really nothing, nothing negative to say about our market. They're all really pleased with how their, their air services is progressing. To this point, the Southwest is actually, um, they're going to be adding a, a once a week Denver flight that coming this summer. Um, so it's a, they do it on a Saturday and it's, it's a methodology that's worked for them in other airline, airports, excuse me, regions to um, test a market to see if there's demand. So the fact that they're, you know, they've only been operating since late August and we're already getting a new route, I think really shows just how um, just confident Southwest is feeling about uh, our market. They're very happy with their load factors. So you can see our current route map. Chicago is kind of our outlier there. It is still on the schedule. The good news is we met with United um, this past week. They do plan to bring that back, they're saying, this summer on Mainline. So that's fantastic because they've been kind of using it as a placeholder, as we all know. And we've been, um, you know, really, it's not the greatest thing for our, our, our passengers when they book that non-stop non flight and it would get changed with a, a layover somewhere. So that was not ideal and understandably people were, weren't liking that. So really positive news to know that there's actually a plan um, and a, a date range where they wanna bring that flight back. We did talk to um, Alaska about the Portland route and it's just, it's probably not gonna happen at least for a year, maybe two. Um, the way they've come out of the pandemic they are really focused on rebuilding Seattle um, and some of their, you know, the, their major routes. Um, they're also really suffering from the, the pilot crisis um, on the horizon regional side. So unfortunately, as much as we want it, um, you know, I, I, don't think, I don't see Portland coming back soon unless something changes or their mindset changes. We did also, um, um, express, you know, San Diego is one of our top markets and right now it's only seasonal for us. So we actually met with the San Diego airport. And they were really like, they've been piping up, hey, we want Eugene. So it was really great to hear that there's mutual interest there. So uh, we're actually planning um, to collaborate San Diego airport and the Eugene airport to really go after. And I think primarily with Alaska Airlines makes the most sense to try and get a year round San Diego in place. So fingers crossed on that. On the legislative side, um, so we have the, you know, the presidential infrastructure bill. Um, and so the first draw is, is kind of in the works to get uh, distributed to airports. It's a billion dollars uh, draw out from the plan and 20% of that would be slated for small hub airports like EUG. Um, so obviously we'll be doing what we can 
to um, take advantage of those funds. And then kind of an odd one that popped up just randomly um, was a Oregon Senate Bill 1565 would make it unlawful um, to a place of public accommodation to refuse to accept United States coins or currency as payment for goods and services. So already in this Senate bill, there was a provision that this, they didn't have to do it on aircraft, um, but we're really pushing and we've reached out to our, our local, or not local, but to the senators um, working on this bill, that there really needs to be a carve out for airports too. None of our airlines um, take cash. Our rental car agencies don't take cash. Um, they did it in the past and it was a logistical nightmare um, with people showing up wanting to buy tickets with cash kind of same day. Um, so we really pointed out that, you know, people could go to, you know, um, a Fred Meyer or something like that and get a prepaid card if they really need to buy a ticket at the airport. Um, and then probably everyone already knows this, but uh, our benefactor, Peter DeFazio is not gonna be seeking reelection. Um, so he's been such a great resource for the Eugene airport in particular. Um, sad to see him go, but he definitely, you know, he served his time. And then you may have heard about the 5G controversy, um, with the rollout of the new C-band 5G and the potential interference with um, radio altimeters in aircraft. So it was a, a couple years of let's not do anything. Then all of a sudden implementation day came and everyone was scrambling and it's, it's been on the forefront of everyone's minds of what, the, what we're gonna do short-term and even more so what we're gonna do long-term. And so one of the um, arguments that the FCC put out and the, the Verizon and ATT was that, well, they're doing this in other countries. It's no big deal. But the truth is that there's some really key differences. And that little chart there, I grabbed that from the FAA site. Um, there's a lot more information on it if you're interested to check it out. Um, that there's some differences in what's going on in Europe and the United States in terms of power levels antenna angles, and then um, buffer zones that are required around airports. So pretty much everything coming in out of Eugene at this point has what's called an AMOC. So that's an exception that allows them to fly in low visibility um, into an airport with um, ILS like EG. Interestingly, E-175s do not. So um, it's, uh, you know, and that's our primary aircraft type, as you can see from the graph. So it's been a little frustrating and it's been not very much transparency on the side of the FAA as far as um, how they're determining this and, oops, sorry, keep doing that, and what the long-term solution is. So it's something we're keeping a close eye on. And here we see our departures and sea capacity. So again, departure numbers slightly down. Uh, once again, some of that's due to upgaging of aircraft. So you can see our, our seat capacity is really up um, 17%. So that, that's, that's great, especially a couple of the seat capacity increase with the great load factors. And to have those two uh, things together being high, you're, you're, that's, that's a good place to be. And then you see our, our projected summer schedule for June. You know, summer gets busy. We've got a lot of events. We've got the World Championships coming up this summer in July, the year after, or the month after what this is. But we're really seeing um, some increase in both departures and seat capacity. General aviation, you can see here we are still down, um, hasn't, hasn't rebounded, um, but uh, other than, um, you can kind of see similar picture in Medford. Um, and you can see our, our internet versus local traffic. Our internet traffic is, is pretty steady. It's our, our local traffic that's, that's, that's down over historical levels. And then she's not here, unfortunately, but I wanted to make sure I throw out a congratulations to Catherine. Uh, she's been um, selected to be part of the Oregon, um, the Department of Aviation board as a board member. So that's a, that's a big deal. So next time you get a chance to talk to her, or, um, make sure you, you throw a congratulations her way. It's, it's, a, it's a really, it's an it's a honorable distinction to be a part of that board. And that is it for the info share. Let me stop sharing. There we go. Um, so let's open it up. Does for um, a discussion, questions, comments? 
And I usually take silence as a no. So I'll, I'll give it a pause until it becomes uncomfortable, and then I'll move on. <laughs> okay, so I'll do it. I'll open up to the floor. Does anyone have anything they'd like to add or for the good of the group? Okay, moving on. Piotrek, do you want to adjourn us? I believe that's yeah. Mark. Oh, yep, I'm sorry. I have an old agenda. I just was reading what I was told to read. Like, um, oh, God, uh, Ron Burgundy. I, was, I had a Ron Burgundy moment. <laughs> so, Mark, my apologies. It's you. <laughs> well played, Andrew. <laughs> uh, thank you, Andrew and Patricia, for those real positive reports. Uh, looks like things are really going well down there. And uh, thank you guys. Uh, if you guys didn't catch the note that uh, Randy sent out, uh, you know, put, uh, put uh, Linda in your thoughts or her husband passed away yesterday. Linda, for you, those of you who don't know, was a, was a long time uh, board member here on the uh, advisory committee. So uh, just uh, put Linda in your thoughts. And, uh, and uh, that was, uh, thank you for letting us know that, Randy. That was uh, a bit of bad news there. Uh, other than that, if um, anybody does have anything to add or 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 uh, ask, uh, I open the uh, for an adjournment in a second. We miss Phil, obviously. All right, All thank you, everybody. Yep, have a great day and have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Bye bye.